Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian, and this is the Drops episode for week five. In this episode, guys, obviously I'm going to tell you which players you should consider cutting from your team. These are guys that have been struggling and are guys that are just not worth holding anymore because they are hurting your team to have them on your team. They are absolute dead weight. Before we get into it, guys, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And check out my Patreon if you do want to support me even further. Let's get into it, guys, and let's start with some forwards that you should consider dropping. And as you saw in the thumbnail, Johnny Gaudreau is the first guy that I would consider dropping. And don't go crazy on me here. I still don't absolutely hate Johnny Gaudreau, but in eight-man and ten-man leagues, Johnny Gaudreau has been absolute dead weight for your fantasy hockey team. He took the money in Columbus and has basically just fallen asleep for the past couple seasons, it seems like. He didn't do a whole lot last year and he hasn't done a whole lot this year at all. He definitely has the talent. He definitely has the skill. He definitely has the potential to be doing better. He just isn't. I don't think he's overly motivated on a bad Columbus team. Now, if you're in more than a 10-man league, like 12, 14 or more, you're definitely hanging on to Johnny Gaudreau and hoping and praying that he turns things around. But as of right now, my hopes aren't overly high. He has not been good at all. And maybe some of you are saying, but, but Julian, he scored last game. That was an empty net goal. That was something that's not going to happen every single game. So no, Johnny Gaudreau isn't turning it around. He scored an empty net goal. I'm going to go ahead and drop him if I'm in a shower league. Then I have Matty Beneers, who I did include in this video a couple of weeks ago, but he's still owned in 51% of leagues. Matty Beneers has been completely non-existent this year, and I really wasn't high on him going into this year either. Seattle's shooting percentage last year as a team was really, really high. And I'm sure you've heard me say this a lot of times if you've been watching a lot of my videos, but that was bound to go down, and Beneers had an amazing year, obviously won the call there, but... I wasn't expecting him to have a better year this year. At best, I was expecting him to have a very similar year if he could actually become a better player and improve. But it doesn't look like he has very much. And Matty Bonier at this point is a drop, especially since he's a natural center. Now, Ricard Raquel is another guy who I'm a little bit sad that we have to be dropping right now. And the reason for that is that he had a really great opportunity at the beginning of the year. He was on the top power play with Carlson, with Crosby, with Malkin and with Gensel. Like that was an amazing deployment for Ricard Raquel. He lost that spot to Brian Rust because he was playing so poorly. And even though he's still playing in the top six in Pittsburgh, he's not doing anything. And not being on that top power play really, really, really does hurt his value. And that's why at this point in most league formats, unless you're in a super deep league, Ricard Raquel is a drop. Then, unsurprisingly, I have Andrew Mangiapane of the Calgary Flames, still 33% rostered for whatever reason. Yes, I understand he's on the first line, but guys, Calgary has been a massive dumpster fire to start the year, and they've now lost six games straight while scoring very few goals. Uyghur has been a bright spot over there, but other than that, there's been very little to be happy about over there. Huberto has been disappointing once again, and Andrew Mangiapane is playing with him on that top line, but I'm not expecting too many great things from Mangiapane. You can go ahead and drop him. And then finally, Alexi Lafreniere. What a surprise. He is disappointing once again on the Rangers. He's not doing all that much. And while he did have a three-game goal streak, he now has a three-game pointless streak. So I'm going to go ahead and drop Alexi Lafreniere and give up on the dream, guys. Until this guy gets traded, there's no way he's ever going to have any fantasy value on New York. Jumping in defenseman Tyson Berry, even though he's still seeing top power play time in Nashville, he's not doing anything with it. He's not getting points very frequently. His peripherals aren't very good. So especially should not be owned in 79% of leagues. In deeper leagues, I would still hang on to him due to that top power play deployment. But he should only be owned in maybe 30 to 40% of leagues. The rest that you could probably drop them. Then we got Jacob Slavin of the Carolina Hurricanes, still 72% roster. And yes, Jacob Slavin is actually one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL. But he is not known for his offensive ability. He's there to be an all-around guy for Carolina. He's not getting any kind of power play time over there, even though he used to a few seasons back. They got better guys 
for that responsibility now in Carolina. And even though he had that amazing point streak, he's now gone five pointless games. And a lot of you guys are still hanging on to him. This dude should not be owned in more than 20 to 30% of leagues. And if you can trade him for some kind of value, go for it. Otherwise, he's a drop. Adam Larson, 50% rostered, is someone that needs to be dropped as well. He was an absolute peripherals beast last year. and was actually putting up the occasional point. Actually, every two or three games this year, the points aren't coming at all. And the peripherals are not as good. So Adam Larson's an easy drop. Noah Hannafin of the Calgary Flames, 45% rostered, has been insanely cold. And with Rasmus Anderson... Uh, you know, getting suspended for four games and Hannafin still not stepping up and doing anything. I don't have a lot of hope for Noah Hannafin this year. Should still be owned in maybe 20, 30% of league because he does give a pretty safe floor usually, but as of right now, he's ice cold and definitely can be dropped in these shallower leagues that own him. And finally, Dylan DeMello. I did have him on my ads video last year, but I did say that his production could drop off a cliff very, very quickly, and it did. He's not known for his offense at all, and his peripherals are very good, but the peripherals aren't enough to have you own Dylan DeMello in more than just a couple percent of leagues, so I would drop Dylan DeMello at this point. No goalies this week because they're going to be very similar to the video last week, but if you do want to know which goalies you should be dropping, go ahead and check out my drops video from last week. I've linked it right up there. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tips.